So we're going to be talking about the long-term clinical outcomes and patterns of follow-up after cardiogenic shock. I have no disclosures. Just to start with a, a bit of a background, as we all know, cardiogenic shock is a complex clinical entity. It has a large spectrum of clinical presentations and is often associated with life-threatening multi-system organ failure. Despite the advancements in medical therapy, the mortality associated with cardiogenic shock remains high. And so far, we have very few evidence-based interventions that are known to improve outcomes among that patient population. Similar to the management of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests and STEMIs, we've now developed regionalized systems of care to help implement standardized protocols for the early recognition and appropriate management of patients with cardiogenic shock. The Toronto General Hospital is one of the regional cardiogenic shock referral centers. It offers mechanical circulatory support as well as advanced therapies. However, the patient follow-up care post-cardiogenic shock has not been previously studied in the past. And this leads to a research question. While the inpatient management of cardiogenic shock has been studied extensively, there is very little data on how or where these patients are followed after their discharge. So our question is, what are the long-term clinical outcomes and patterns of follow-up after cardiogenic shock admissions? This was a retrospective cohort study of all adult cardiogenic shock patients admitted to the Toronto General Hospital CCU over a nine-year period between 2014 and 2023. The clinician-determined inclusion criteria was based on the shock trial definition of cardiogenic shock. We collected data regarding long-term survival after cardiogenic shock admissions. We identified the type of outpatient follow-up received after discharge. And finally, survival based on the type of follow-up received was compared using the Kaplan-Meier analysis. We identified 1,582 cardiogenic shock patients over this time period. The mean age of our cohort was 60 years of age. 30% of our patients were females, and 21% of our patients had cardiogenic shock in the setting of acute myocardial infarction. In terms of the long-term survival, the, among our patient cohort, the five-year mortality rate was estimated at 63%. In terms of patterns of follow-up among cardiogenic shock survivors, 47% were followed at a major cardiogenic shock referral center, or in this case, the UHN. 7% of our patients were followed primarily by an outpatient community cardiologist. 18% of our patients were followed at the LVAD or transplant clinic. And it's important to note that we were not able to identify follow-up data in 23% of our patients. Most of them were transferred to another institution at the time of their discharge. Most importantly, when we look at the percentage of follow-up by a heart function clinic, we found that only 47% of our cardiogenic shock patients were followed by a specialized heart function clinic, either at an academic center or in the community. This here is the Kaplan-Meier analysis of survival comparing these two patient groups. And when we look at cardiogenic shock patients who were followed by a dedicated heart function clinic, these patients had better survival in the long term compared to those patients who were not followed at a heart function clinic. And this difference in survival was statistically significant. In terms of the baseline characteristics of patients who were followed at the heart function clinic, we noted that they were younger in age with a seven-year difference in their mean age. Otherwise, there were no statistically, uh, uh, statistically significant differences in their BMIs, mean arterial pressures, lactates, or CCU length of stay. And when we looked at their comorbidities, they were also less likely to have diabetes or hypertension. So it's possible that we're selecting for patients who may be candidates for advanced therapies in the long term to be followed at the heart function clinic. In terms of candidacy for advanced therapies in relation to follow-up post-discharge, we found that cardiogenic shock patients with known follow-up at the time of their discharge, either by advanced heart failure or general cardiology, were more likely to receive advanced therapies, including LVAD and heart transplant, compared to those patients with that known follow-up at the time of their discharge. And this difference was also statistically significant. So the overall long-term mortality among our cohort was estimated at 63%. This rate is similar to the mortality rates seen in the six-year follow-up studies of the patients included in the shock trial and the IPP shock 2 trial. So it's important to recognize that mortality remains high among cardiogenic shock survivors even after hospital discharge. And this highlights the need for future RCTs to assess long-term interventions to improve outcomes. 
What we identified is that there is a significant survival benefit among cardiogenic shock patients who were followed at a specialized heart function clinic. In addition, having outpatient follow-up was significantly associated with receiving advanced heart failure therapies. It's important to note that 23% of our cardiogenic shock patients did not have confirmed follow-up at the time of their discharge, and no further details were available regarding their care. This represents an opportunity for quality improvement to identify any barriers that these patients might face to access post-discharge follow-up care in the community. In terms of the clinical effectiveness of the heart function clinic uh, among cardiogenic shock patients, and these are ideas as we can't evidence this through our project, but in theory, cardiogenic shock patients are a higher risk population, so they could benefit from a more comprehensive follow-up based on more frequent evaluations. The heart function clinic allows for the rapid titration of goal-directed medical therapy. It's more available and accessible by patients, and it could also facilitate early referral for advanced therapies. In terms of our limitations, this was a retrospective cohort study, so confounding variables could not be fully controlled. Despite the large sample size of our cohort, this was also a single center study, so our results reflect the clinical practices at, a, at TGH and does not really reflect the follow-up patterns at different centers. And finally, we collected our data mostly through EPIC, which is the EMR system used at TGH, so we did not have the full access to the um, data points in the community. In conclusion, just to summarize my talk, the overall long-term mortality associated with cardiogenic shock remains substantially high. Follow-up after cardiogenic shock admission is essential to improve outcomes as well as access to advanced heart failure therapies. And finally, we need more research to assess survivorship after critical illness and to identify any barriers to accessing post-discharge uh, accessing post-discharge follow-up care. Thank you very much. Big thank you to my supervisors, Dr. Luck and Dr. Brambit, and everyone who contributed to this project, and thank you guys for listening.